line which I had already, but I'm going to repeat it, is that the election cycle, especially the presidential one, is the most difficult time for a revolutionary party in the United States. In Europe, it can be taken advantage of, but in the United States, with its tradition, it's a different story. Because of the structure of the elections, the winner take all, and because of the tradition of supporting the Democratic Party by radicals and anybody else, it's the most difficult time for a Marxist organization. On how you keep your Marxist edge in an election cycle that's taking place during one of the most reactionary periods in U.S. history. That's no small thing. And we did it. We did it in Carolina. That's the point. That's our answer to the bourgeois election. Get in the streets. Get in the struggle. Show what it's all about. Let them have their convention. But we're in the streets in the struggle, and we did very well to begin the process of combating this deadly period in which money comes down from the sky like rain, only it's not the sky, it's the vaults of the bosses. Shower upon both parties and a master charade is put on for two months, beginning with the convention. There's a tremendous amount of discussion about the details of both conventions and both parties and both candidates, and that's important because we as a party have to pay attention to the details of capitalist politics. For the, for the reason that this is what is being foisted upon, foisted upon our cliff. And the more conscious elements pay attention to politics, even if it's against their interests, they pay attention to it. So we must pay attention to it. We can't ignore it. We ignore it at our own. But also, we can't be drawn in by it. That's the, that's the balance that we have to strike every time this starts up. These engines parliamentarism start up. And so, but after all the details are analyzed, and we will analyze them, comments are preparing to analyze them in the paper and at subsequent meetings, let's not forget what this is really fundamentally about. It's about which factions of the ruling class are going to get their hands on the capitalist state and its $3 trillion budget and going to give it to all their friends. That's what this is about. Capturing the loot that comes with capturing the capitalist state, the commander. That's what animates them all, no matter what their sweet words are or their right-wing words are. That's what it's about. And they cultivate different political groupings and different political parties in order for each faction of the ruling class to gain its position in the state. And if we lose sight of that, we forget what kind of a class society we're living in. We're living in a capitalist democracy, which is a democracy for capital. And a nightmare for the workers. We must never forget that. When we get into the details, we can get into them. And we should. Marx, when he wrote The Civil War in France, analyzing the Paris Commune, he made the definitive a characterization of capitalist democracy and parliamentarism. And when he said, every few years, the oppressed get to vote for the next oppressor who's going to oppress and exploit them for the next few years. That's the essence of capitalist democracy. It may not appear that way, 
Because if you look at these two different inventions, <coughs> they look like night and day. You look at the Republican Convention, if you have the stomach to do that, <laughs> at the time, I had a clear back, I had a much water. <laughs> you see, this is the party of the bourgeoisie. They all, by the way, most of the bourgeoisie belongs to the Republican Party. It's their party. They control the other party, but they belong to this party. They were all white. There was a, a contest going on. Who could find more than three black people in the whole 15,000 or however many there were? It was completely white. It was rich. It was comfortable. It was reactionary. It was racist to the core. All about welfare, about Obama. Removing the work requirement for welfare, we wish it did. But that was a right wing racist attack. And about the birth certificate that Romney dropped out. Oh, nobody ever asked me for my birth certificate, you know. And that all carries in. And we built it. We built it, you know, because Obama said we didn't build, we, people built the country with the help of, of uh, the government and workers and so on. And they took this little phrase out of context and made it a, a, a convention thing. There's something going on in capitalist politics, but we need more time to discuss that. The right wing has taken over the Republican Party, but we need to find out who is this right wing? Who is it? It's the Tea Party, it's the Army, it's the, it's the the Pope brothers and all of the others. But we also have to ask ourselves, oh, does the modern bourgeoisie have run out of money? They could have just let this happen? Or are they part of it? Is the big bourgeoisie part of this? In the economic crisis? Well, we'll, we'll take that up some other time. But just remember, George W. Bush, when he, as reactionary as he is, when he ran for the presidency in whatever year, it was 19, it was 2002, right? 2000. He ran as a compassionate conservative. Don't forget that. He ran being sympathetic to undocumented to immigrants, and being sympathetic to students and wanting to rebuild the education system because no students should be left behind, and so on and so forth. These people are running as right-wing reactionaries. Plain and simple, they're saying, we're going to cut you and cut you and cut you. And that's our problem. This is an evolution of capitalist politics. And anybody in the Republican Party who doesn't like it, you're out. We'll put a ton of money into your primary, and you'll be gone tomorrow. It's a new trend. And if you look at it, and if you saw this convention, and you saw them all with the American flag and all of them, the American flag all of them. If you saw Ryan, and you saw Romney, it, it, it's calculated to scare people and stampede them into the Democratic, to the Democratic Party. I mean, the progressives, the workers, the effect. We look at the Democratic Convention. It's a different universe. There's black people all over. There's Latinos. There's Asians. There's workers. There's unions. Union cops, union shirts, everybody. It's the masses. It's the, it's the advanced detachment of the more progressive masses who come and are the base of the Democratic Party. And these parties look so different that it, to, the, to the average worker, there's absolutely no, it's like a no thing. Right? But they're not as different as they look. They're not as different as they look, although there are significant differences. And we must take them into account. One of them is open to 
racism, promoting racism, promoting voter ID laws, promoting a state of ground laws, promoting all kinds of reactionary legislation and, and, and administrative measures. Like, of course, the uh, anti-abortion law, our job coming in. That's one party, and the other party is trying to resist with some of this most extreme reaction in the But after November 6th, the workers are going to go back. The end of the dictatorship of the capital is eight hours a day if they have a job. Have the police in their community. Have the armed security snooping around every foot. Surveilling everybody. The FBI, they're going to still be farming and drawing time with everybody all over the world at will. One of the plants all over the prisons are still filled with press people and poor people like to do. Capitalism is hell for the nation. That's the truth. Our job is not to fix it and improve it. Our job is to generate resistance against it. That's, our, that's, that's what we're about. That's what communists do. They're having a big faction fight now in the form of the election. If they move to take democratic rights away from the people in the form of voter ID laws, or and stop them first, or whatever, we will fight them. We will fight them for the masses in the streets in the struggle. We will not. People say, well, what are you going to do? You're out of the new things if you don't vote or this and that. No. We're not out of things. We're not, we run out of things in Charlotte. We run out of things in Baltimore, or in Detroit, or in Boston, or all over the country in Los Angeles. We're not out of things. And we don't intend to be out of things. This fraudulent art discussion about who fixed the economy, who built the economy, alone. Capitalism. It's the laws of capitalist development that are doing what it's doing to the unemployed. None of them would even dare ever say that. They each want to blame the other one for the power. The politicians have no control over the capitalist cycle of reproduction. They have no control. It's the system of exploitation that's bringing all this joblessness and these low wages, and so on. It's a